Okay, uh, I want to show you how you can do a semi-transparent or semi-opaque uh, material. And this is my finished one. Let me, uh, let me make a copy of this to show you. Well, let me just talk about this for a second. This is the exhaust material for the health patch. And this is animated, and it's animated by just creating the material as described in the Texture and Game Art chapter and then sliding that thing slightly down each time. And each one of these has its own grayscale map applied to it for the transparency. And then you've got your template, of course. So what I want to do is just simplify this and show you how you can do one of these. So I'll uh, duplicate this material. And let's just zoom in. And let's just work on one layer of it. So let's we'll get rid of these guys. Simplify what you're even looking at here. Just drop these into the trash can. Okay, and we'll get rid of this too. All right, so this is our basic uh, exhaust type material. And I'm going to drag this down into the new layer uh, button here, and that creates a new layer. And I'm going to do it again. I'll tell you why. This is my original that I don't want to touch in case I need it for something if I destroy it by messing around or whatever. This is the one that's going to be the working copy that gets sent out. So I'll say, uh, let's say PG1 or something. And this will be the one where you're turning to a grayscale. So we'll just call it grayscale. Whenever you can label layers and different materials, it makes a lot of sense to do that. It keeps your project a lot more organized. So I'm going to go to grayscale layer. Go to image, adjustments, desaturate. The way this works is uh, anything that's black is going to be totally transparent. Anything that's totally white will be totally opaque. And uh, what I want to do right now is create a biped to go with this guy. So we'll create systems, biped, and make something that looks like it'll fit. And of course, you can go in and change the structure of this thing. Neck links, you probably only need one. Uh, Spine links, you probably only need two. Going with a pretty simple setup here. Um, you can adjust your height here if you want to. And anything else, that's about that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the modified panel. And not the modified panel, I'm sorry, the motion panel, fourth panel over. And you've got two basic modes. You've got figure mode and having figure mode turned off. Right now it's turned off. This is more for when you're animating. But I'm going to turn the figure mode on because I want to make some adjustments on this biped. Maybe, uh, you know, I probably want to see how well he's going to fit in here. As you can see, if I hit on the G key uh, grid, this guy is standing at the origin. I want to put the biped inside of him. Um, to see what I'm doing, I'm going to right click and go to properties and just freeze and make him see through. So that mesh is going to be frozen and see neck forward if we want to. Or we can bend the whole spine forward. And try to get that lined up and this kind of makes you rethink how you did your mesh. Right? Okay, um, I'm going to stop it there and pick up in uh, the next stage. This. And you might as well do them both at once so they can be sure that they're going to match up. Right about like that I think would be good. And while you're checking elbows, you might as well check knees. Okay, that's showing you when you grab one bone, it's showing you where that joint is. And if you're not sure, go ahead and bend one of them. And we could rotate this one. Okay, I can see that the joint is right at the ball. Okay, so. I think we're still good on the elbows. <clears throat> and one thing to think about too. The type of skeleton you're using is going to change how this how the joints appear. And I think with the skeleton, it's a little easier to tell what's going on. But you've got to, you've got to, sometimes you have to test these things out. So 
back view. Is that really the knee? I think it's pretty close. And that means we can shorten these guys up a little bit. Now we need some helpers. Why do you need helpers? Well, if this arm bends, this upper arm bends, and the clavicle stays where it's at, the uh, vertices are going to kind of get squeezed. Um, you're going to have this vertex here, for instance, moving quite a bit, and maybe this one's staying still, and there's going to be a pinch there, and you're going to have collapsed vertices. So what if you could just get these areas, this area right here in the, this shoulder area, to move um, half as much as this bone moves. So it's kind of a gradual progression, and that's what uh, a helper bone will, will allow you to do. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, Systems again, Bones, and press and drag a bone out. And um, let's just place this one. I'm going to align it with the existing. Now we can go back to this trajectories and you can see there's a little bit more of an even arc. And the feet, and take a look at the feet uh, trajectories. We've got trajectories turned on here. And that one looks okay, and this one looks okay. Um, let's see. If you wanted to make an adjustment, let's say that you, you're not thrilled about um, this arc here, for instance. You see where the foot's coming up from this keyframe to this keyframe, from 4 to 8? What if you wanted more of an arc there? You could go right to that 6th keyframe, turn on Auto Key, move the keyframe up a little bit. And it sets a key for you. And because Auto Key's on, it, it turns it on. See how that works? Okay, so you got to kind of use your own judgment on those, but that's how you use trajectories. You turn off auto key, go back to parameters, and we back where we started. And that's kind of the overview of a, a basic run cycle. For the full version of the book CD with uh, 90 minutes of video tutorials, check out Creating Game Art for 3D Engines, available at Amazon. Or check out 3dcognition.com for more information about the book. And also keep in mind garagegames.com, the makers of the Torque Engine.